But when God created the world, there were no white people. And any time anybody gives you a God who doesn't look like you, you give him that God back. Who was living in Europe at that time? No one. Who was living in Asia at that time? No one. Who was living in America? No one. This is Dr. Kiura Nkuba. He is a lecturer of classical African history, a businessman and a financial engineer, the founder of Action on Earth, an organization that brings black people together to discuss African history, and this is one of his teachings. Black. Now, in your homes, the pictures of God that you have is what color? Be honest. Tell the truth and shame the white man. What color are the pictures on the wall in your homes? White. And what color then is the devil? So if I kill all of you, I have fought the devil, won't I? Is that not, does it make sense? If I am a Christian, and they say, onward Christian soldiers, eh? If I am a soldier of Christ, my job is to fight the devil. What does the devil look like? Isn't it black? When you go in a military college, the sabao, when you are learning how to shoot, eh? the target practice is what kind of head? It's a black head. So, it is no wonder that black people hate themselves. Because every time you see God, you are not thinking of your sister or your mother or your uncle. You are not thinking of Kiurankuba as looking like God. No. You are thinking that somebody else, not you, looks like God and you look like the devil. And most of the time, if I look like the devil, I am told I'm a devil, then I act like a devil. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint people. People are thinking that, uh, you know, I'm a wonderful person. You know, they've called me a devil. Let me try to live up to the part. That's what psychology says. But I'm here to tell you today, number one, that when God created the world, there were no white people at all. There were no Chinese. There were no, no Indians. They were no Italians, no Romans, no Germans, no Poles, no Finns, no Swedes, no Goths, no Vandals, no Vikings, no Vikings. They were only black people. Only black people. They were probably at the time darker than you. So, if you read any sacred text and it says that you are created in the image of God and in the likeness of God, it means God is what color? Black. And any time anybody gives you a God who doesn't look like you, you give him that God back. You say, you know what? Yeah, your God looks okay, but just take him. Because at the dawn of time, there were no other people on earth but us. None. And you know the most interesting story is that that story unfolded around this river that passes it through, through your district. The Nile. That is where humanity began. To the extent that UNESCO, United Nations Educational Scientific Committee Organization, in volume 2, chapter 1, it says as a result of the work of Professor Like and other subsequent work, it leads us to conclude that more than 150,000 years ago, beings morphologically identical with the man of today were living in the area of the Great Lakes, at the foothills of the mountains of the moon, at the source of the Nile, in the land of the gods, and nowhere else. UNESCO, nowhere else. Humanity went through five stages. The first stages are known as Australopithecin, black. Where were they living? Where you are living? How old, how long ago? 5.5 million years ago. Who was living in Europe at that time? No one. Who was living in Asia at that time? No one. Who was living in America North? None. America South? None. Bismarck Archipelago? No one. Australia, Tonga? None. Haiti, Fiji, Samoa, who was living there? No one. Humanity was only here. 3.5 million years ago, Homo habilis. Where was he living? Here. 
Was he living elsewhere? No. 1.5 million years. Humanity at the stage of Homo erectus, the African that walks upright. Where is he living? Here. He lives here to populate the world. He passes through the Gulf of Eden, avoids Saudi Arabia, crosses into India. And then he goes through Kenya, Nijikenda, Tayar in Australia, and populates all the islands in between. Avoids Israel, avoids Jordan, avoids Syria. He also discovers fire. Then 150,000 years, modern man, known as Homo sapien. Homo sapien. The oldest Homo sapien, the bones discovered in Homo Valley in Ethiopia and Kenya. He started where? Here. Then he moves with his feet and his cows, mobile food, and his language, articulated symbolic language, and his brain, a big cranium, and he populates Europe. He is the first person to populate Europe about um, 40,000 years ago, known as Gromordi. The first people to populate Europe were black people. They were known as Gromordi. First people to populate England were black people. They were known as Bika. First people to populate India were black people. They were known as Dravidians. First people to populate Japan, black people. They were known as Masaba Negroes. Mulembe, Kamaku, Wagasile, they came from here. They populated Japan. That's why Japanese names are like Ugandan names. Takahara, Nakamura, Kato, Toyota, all those. Because the first Japanese were black people. In ancient time, the whole world belonged to the black man, the black woman. You are the people that populated the world. You are the people that gave birth to everybody else. And quite significantly, and I am telling you this as a scholar, I have a library of 32,000 books. I have read each one of them, not only read them, but remember them. I have traveled in almost every corner of the world, lectured at the most prestigious universities. I am telling you that in ancient time, the old, the hundred people who are on earth were you and your ancestors. You. And you are also the people of the scriptures. All scripture, be it the Rig Vit Veda, the Nama Pali, the Peran Peru, the Papyrus of Ani, the Papyrus of Hunefa, the Quran, the Bible, the Book of the Rosta, the Epic of Gilgamesh, is all about. When he was asked what provoked his passion for Africa and art history, here is what he said I went to England in the 1980s and gave a couple of lectures in some universities. They invited me to study there and I studied about how Europe reports about Africa. I stumbled upon a document by Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement in America. I read about Malcolm S and I woke up to the fact that there are other black people outside Africa. I decided that I had to find a teacher who would teach me where I was. I went to Senegal and became a student of Czech and Tadiop and met a Creole who told me about Africa. I was the most brainwashed Africans you could have come across. I thought that white people are gods and goddess and Jesus was white. I used to drink alcohol, soda and eat tiny food and chicken. I used to watch football made in Germany, wear t-shirt, suit and ties made in Europe. I went to England because the training I had received in school gave me an appetite for Europe. It had got me interested in the history of Germany, Italy and everything about Europe. But when I arrived in England, the first thing I saw was how poor people lived over here. And when I started reading about black people, I realized that I was not as educated as I thought I was. I started identifying myself as black person with a history. I developed a great appetite for Africa and my identity as an African. Today, I'm allergic to European tailored clothes and I only eat food that grows in the soil. And here you have it guys. Kindly share your opinion in the comment box below and do not forget to like this video so YouTube can share this video with more people like you. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.